guys, welcome back for another video. I'm Jess and I'm one of the creative designers here at Sizzix. As you can probably tell by this gorgeous um, floral hoop that is surrounding me, this video is all about flowers and florals and how to make them just as gorgeous as we have them on this gorgeous hoop. Um, I'm gonna do all the kind of beginning steps of a really simple flower and how to use crepe paper, sculpting foam and cardstock. And then hopefully you can add all your flowers to something like this to create a gorgeous, centerpiece for any wedding, bridal shower, a baby shower, party, event, anything that you've got coming up. And then you can take some gorgeous Instagram worthy shots um, with your flowers. So let's get going. <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm going to start off with kind of the basics of flower making. I'm going to use a really easy dye from our kind of essential florals. Now this is the Daisy Flower Mix and I've chosen this one because it's really nice and easy to use but it also gives you plenty of options when it comes to flower making. Now I'm just going to take all the pieces out to show you and later on in the video towards the end I will show you some other flower designs that you can use and I have used on that gorgeous flower hoop. Um, but I wanted to show you this one to start off with. If you're new to flower making, it's a really nice starting point. Now, like I said, this is the Daisy Flower Mix and it comes with these two larger pieces and they're all pieced together. Now, this is important when you're making things like sculpting foam uh, flowers in particular. It's nice and easy to do with a whole flower rather than individual petals. Whereas this die also comes with individual petals which look like this. And this is important when you are making crepe paper flowers. So you want a bit of both. You've also got different elements for the center of flowers as well with this one design. So it's kind of does everything for you. So if you're new to flower making, this is a great one to start off with. Now, to start off with, I'm going to show you guys how to make them with that sculpting foam. Now I've got some in a box down here. It comes in multiple different colorways, um, but this one is the lighter of them. So you've got like light pinks, cream, white, things like that. Um, and when you heat it, it kind of like shrinks, not really shrinks up, but like changes so you can manipulate it and form the petals to make them look more realistic. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. So I've cut some of them out already. I might just cut a few more out. Let me grab some of the foam that I've got down here. I'm gonna use the larger flowers just so you guys can see them a little better. But again, with this die, it's a really nice thing that you've got larger flowers and you've got smaller flowers as well to work with. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors and just cut this. Now the sculpting foam cuts beautifully, um, both with just scissors and with um, die cuts as well. And then I'm going to use this center section and I'm going to cut that as well. Now, this center section is really nice as well because you can um, form it around and it'll be really nice and 3D and that works beautifully with the sculpting foam. So I'm going to bring in my machine and we're just going to die cut it just like any other cardstock basically. So I'm going to cut the center section from a lighter color and then my petals from a nice pink. We're just going to roll that. And hopefully you can see how well that cuts out. So don't worry about cutting your dies um, with your sculpting foam. It's perfectly easy to do. So once you've done that, we can start to add some heat so they look a little bit more realistic. Now you can, before you get onto that step, you can add some oil pastels to add a little bit of extra dimension and color if you want to. So you can take your oil pastels and just add a little bit of extra color to the center of the flowers. And when you go to add the heat, the oil pastels melt a little bit so you don't need to be really precise with this. You can be pretty messy because it's all kind of going to blend together when you add the heat with the heat gun. You can blend them a little bit with your fingers if you want to, but you can kind of be a little bit messy and free flowing because again, it is, we're talking about flowers and petals, like they're not perfect. And I think that's why I like using the oil pastels and the sculpting foam because you do get that 
kind of non-conformative style with your flowers. So we're just going to add a little bit of colour and just blend that really roughly. Now you can also add the colour to um, the edges of your centrepiece as well. I could add like a darker tone just to the edges of this if I want to. I'm just going to do it just ever so slightly, nothing too fancy. Or I can lay it down and add some more definition as well. But we just want a touch of colour on the edge of those. So once you're happy with all the colour that you've got, I mean, I barely put any on those, but it'll just highlight it ever so slightly. Then you want to bring in your heat gun. Now you want to use a heat resistant or a silicone mat. I've got one from the um, hot glue gun accessory kit. And then you're going to place your flower on there, hold it down with, um, I've got this silicone um, implement that is also from the glue gun accessory kit. And then I'm going to take my heat gun and apply heat directly onto it. Now, just for a few seconds, until you see the, the sculpting foam kind of react, and then I pinch it in the middle, like so, bunch all my petals together, place it in between my palms, and I literally just roll it in between my palms. And this is going to give the petals a really nice natural look. Now, don't worry, it's not going to ruin them. You can kind of fluff them out a little bit afterwards. But this is the kind of thing that you want, something really natural. So I'm just going to do that with a couple more of them, and then we're going to piece them all together. Okay, so that is the last kind of petal that I'm doing, but the more that you cut, the more that you do, the fuller the flower is going to look. So if you want a really nice full flower, then keep cutting and adding more layers and more petals onto there because that's what's going to make it look really full um, and really realistic um, as far as your flowers will go. So. Now I'm just literally going to place some hot glue in the centre and I'm going to layer them up, kind of alternating where the petals sit. And then I'm going to add on the, the sentiment, not the sentiment, the stamen <laughs> um, sections afterwards. But hopefully you can see that flower kind of come to life and how pretty is that you can make it even cl more closed if you wanted to by pinching it in the middle i want it quite open so i'm going to keep it like that but how pretty is that and you can see how full that is already just with those full layers but you can keep adding and then when you're ready to take your set your um stamens sections you can heat those too so i can take my heat gun but this time we're going to hold it from this side, and we're going to heat it a little bit. And then, while it's still a little warm, we're just going to take all of those little bits and give them a twist. And that's going to create that more realistic feel from the center. And then what you want to do is you want to twist these around in a circle. So let's just heat this one up as well. Again, just a little bit with your fingers. And then we're going to add some glue. So I'm going to take this just in my tweezers, just to hold one side. And then I'm going to add a string of glue along the base. And I'm going to twist it. And 
and this is going to create the center of that flower. And then we can just add the other one onto it to just make it a little bit more full. Again, just attach it. And twist. And then once you've got that, you can pull out the tweezers. And then you've got your center and you just want to give it a little bit of a fluff in the middle. I just need a little bit more glue. There we go. Just fluff that out. And that looks like a proper center of a flower and we're just going to place that in the middle with just some more hot glue. There we go. And that is your sculpting foam flower. How cute is that? This is probably one of the most realistic ones out of all of them, this one in the crepe paper, um, just because you've got that natural form to your flower. Um, and these are waterproof as well. So if you are gonna have this outside um, or anything like that, then the sculpting flowers, um, foam flowers are a really good way to go. So that is our sculpting foam flower. So once we've got that one, let's show you guys how to do crepe paper. Now with your crepe paper, I said at the beginning, this is where those individual petals are gonna come in use because we don't really want these ones with crepe paper because everything's kind of moving in the wrong, in different directions. And with crepe paper, we want to use the lines of the paper to our advantage, to the grain of the paper. Whereas if we cut something like this from crepe paper, the grains of the paper are running all the wrong way along the petal and it's gonna pull your petals out in really weird ways. So with this one, you want to have them going lengthways with the grain of the paper and that way when you go to sculpt your petal, it's gonna sculpt this way like a little cup shape rather than sculpting that way and make your um, petal look really long and not real basically. So I've actually pre-cut quite a lot of mine Let's move this out of the way. Yeah, I've pre-cut a lot of mine just to show you guys. And again, I've used the larger petal, but you can use the smaller ones if you have something a little smaller that you wanna create. And hopefully you can see the grain of um, the crepe paper is running lengthways. So once you've done that, you can then take our fold and form tool and you can hold it at the base and you can just slide that crepe paper into the angle of the fold and form just through that little slot hold it at the base and then I just want to curve it away from me and I'm going to get that nice curve okay and that's the kind of thing that we want from all of these petals so I'm just going to slot them in there curve and you've got that and I just give it a little bit of a point at the end as well and it's really easy to do. It's really nice and therapeutic to do as well, actually. <laughs> and you just wanna do that with all of your petals until they're all sculpted. <laughs> So I've just sculpted all of my petals. I've got quite a few there, but I tend to say, um, cut more than you need and then you can use them for the next flower or save them, whatever you want. And just like with the sculpting foam one, the more petals, the more fuller it's gonna look and um, the more realistic usually. So I've got the center bits that I cut with the sculpting foam as well, just with the crepe paper. This is just in a slightly different color. Um, and then I've made sure to cut again along the grain of the paper but this way with the center bit I don't want to cut it this way I want to cut it this way so when I go to pull out and stretch out that crepe paper it's going to stretch lengthways so that way with my centerpiece that's quite important now what you can do with these petals as well is once you've sculpted them with your 
um, fold and form tool, you can take them in your finger and you can like pull them out ever so slightly and you can make them a little wider if you wanted to as well. So that's something you can also do. And that's very important when it comes to the way that the grain of the paper is cut. So that means that you can sculpt them this way and you get that nice curved little cup shape rather than sculpting them the other way. So yeah, you can do that as well if you want to. I'll just do that with a few of them. And then that center piece. Now what I like to do with these is I like to form them around a piece of florist wire as my base. Because we are going to have these on wire because we want to attach them to something. We want to attach them to a hoop or a garland or something like that. So then being on wire is going to help. And I find that with the, with the um, crepe paper ones especially, it just works really nicely to have that base um, of the wire already on there. Whereas the sculpting foam one and the paper one, you can attach the wire afterwards just to the back. And I find it works just as well. So again, just like with the sculpting foam one, we're just gonna place that glue along the base, twist it round. It's almost like the wire is acting like the tweezers were in the sculpting foam one. And then you can fluff that out once you've got all the layers you want. Again, I tend to do at least a couple to make it nice and full. Just twist that round and add more, oh, more, add more glue as you go. Okay, so I've got my centerpiece. It's important to kind of fluff it out as well, make it nice and full. And then we can start to add on our individual petals. Now with these, all I want to do is just place a little bit of hot glue to the base of the petal and then kind of attach it around that centerpiece and kind of push it out like that. And I'm going to fill that whole thing. So I tend to do one layer all around there first and then I'll fill in any gaps on the back as well. So I'll just carry on and just keep adding those petals. I think I've stuck all those on. I'm happy with where they are. Now I've kind of stuck mine in different ways. So some of the petals are sculpted inwards, some of the sculpted outwards, um, just to make it really nice and free form. But you can go in and just tease the petals and move them around as you wish if you want to kind of change them up. But you just want to make sure all those gaps are filled and then you have a really gorgeous um, crepe paper flower and you can see the difference uh, from the sculpting foam one just from using that same die but just two different kinds of um, materials basically. So the very last one is using cardstock. Now this is probably the simplest one that you can do. It's nice and easy um, but it's just nice to have all those options. So again I've cut out these from just some of our cardstock and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them on with the um, paper sculpting kit and the little ball that comes with the paper sculpting kit. So the foam mat and the little ball stylus and just add pressure onto these so they kind of curl up and that's going to give that 3D effect to these ones. So this is probably the easiest way that you can make flowers. Um, so if you're just a beginner, maybe start out with your paper one and then move on to your sculpting foam and uh, your crepe paper. But it's nice to have options, isn't it? So there we go. So once you've got that, again, the more layers, the fuller your flower's going to look. I feel like it's, I'm a broken record right now, but <laughs> it's an important thing to remember when you are flower making and just layer them up and make sure to alternate where those petals sit so they're not sitting on top of one another so you're filling the gaps 
For this one, I've done larger petals down the bottom, and then I've done some of the smaller ones on the top, just to show you that you can kind of use those together or separately, however you kind of want to. And then instead for the centerpiece of this one, I have got some little circles that I've die cut using a piece from that die set as well. So if you don't want a 3D stamen center, you can just have a flat circle in the center as well. So that is definitely an option. And then if you wanna add wire to the base of your um, cardstock flower or your um, sculpting foam flower, I've got my words then, you can just take some florist wire, curve it at the end so you've got a, like a little circle, and then all I do is add just a little bit of hot glue onto the back, and then press that into the back there, into the glue, and then let it set, and then you're going to have it attached onto your wire, ready to attach to whatever you want. So now I've got all of my flowers, I'm going to let them set, and I will show you how to attach them onto something like a hoop or a garland or something like that. I've got all of my flowers attached to wire, so I'll just hold these up just quickly just to show you guys. Look at the difference in all three of those. All using that same die set, but just different materials, cardstock, sculpting foam, and crepe paper. I love the difference that you can get from all three of those, all using that one die set. Um, I think that's just a really nice thing to point out is how much versatility you can get with a flower set, particularly this one. So once you've got whatever you want to add, I'll go in the middle actually, there we go. <laughs> Once you've got whatever you wanna add your flowers to, now this is a wooden hoop. Um, you want something light, because particularly if you're gonna hang it with like fishing wire or something like that, um, for people to kind of stand behind and pose behind or in front of, you need to be light. So wooden hoop, um, even a hula hoop would work, absolutely. Um, I've seen people do this with like pool noodles before as well um, and they can actually stick the flowers into the pool noodle using the wire definitely a good option um, but I've just used a wooden hoop and what I've actually done all the foliage on there I have taken a faux foliage garland now you can get these online from kind of anywhere um, or a craft store or a florist or something like that um, and I just find these are really easy, rather than working with individual fake foliage pieces, it's all attached in one, and all you need to do is literally wrap it around the hoop. Now this has already got a couple of um, flowers that I've made attached to it, but even if you just take it as it is, wrap it around your hoop, get your foliage on there first, then that's gonna kind of do a lot of the hard work for you, and then all you need to do from there is take your flowers, I haven't really got any gaps going at the moment because I've kind of filled them all. <laughs> but you just want to take your flowers, you just find where you've got a gap, where you want to fill it, you place that on, on there, and then you just wrap the rest of the wire attached to the back of your flower around the hoop as well. Since that's going to be green, it's going to mix in with all your fake foliage, and because it's not glued on, it's wrapped with the wire, it's going to stay there. Same with the foliage. So you can hot glue these on, but I find doing them this way means it's way more secure. And then you can just go and piece them all together until you've got this gorgeous hoop ready for any um, Instagram um, photos that you want to take at any kind of event. How cute is it? I mean, you can change up the colours as well. I've got a mixture of flowers. I have got the daisy ones on there um, with paper, crepe paper, sculpting foam. I've got a mixture of other flowers as well in all different materials. I'll just show you a handful of the other flowers um, the dyes that I've used to create the other flowers as well. So I've got things like the rose on there. So this is a classic rose, so you can make roses. Um, this is a really nice one with crepe paper. The Lysianthus, this one works beautifully with sculpting foam. Um, so you could use that one on there. Um, this one is the garden rose. So that one works for crepe paper really, really well. And then we've got the peony, which works great with cardstock. So just those four are four others, along with the daisy flower mix, that you can use um, alongside that one to kind of fill out your 
wreath or your hoop with all different kinds of flowers. And that just means it looks, I think, more realistic and like you've got a little bit more going on. So definitely mix and match your flowers. But if you are a beginner, start with that daisy flower mix. You can't go wrong. Have a play around with the different materials. Um, and yeah, like show me guys, if you make one of these gorgeous hoops for, I don't know, a baby shower, a wedding, a birthday, anything like that, please share it with us or any kind of flower mix that you're gonna create this summer. Um, we'd love to see it and you know me, I'm here for all the floral decorations um, so they make me so happy and I hope this video has made you happy as well, even just seeing me in a flower hoop <laughs> standing here. Um, so I think that is everything from me today guys, thank you so much for watching, um, I'll see you in the next one but until then stay safe and keep crafting, thanks, bye!